Okay, I've got the water. I have the play we're talking about. I have notes. <clears throat> okay, I am ready. Hey, hi, hello, what is up? My name is Emma. I'm a support Tyler, I guess, if we're being full name about it. And I'm gonna read plays, gonna tell you about them, and hopefully you'll learn something. And if you like learning, then you're in the right place. Let's just begin, shall we? The play we are going to be talking about today is Bump by, my guess is gonna be Kira. No, that's bias because I have a friend named Kira and she spells it like without the H. I'm gonna go with Kiara. That's what I'm gonna go with, Kiara Atik. Let me check. Oh, I found something. Oh, oh, oh. Shh, 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 shh. Um, and that's Kiara down there in the middle. Kiara, she said it. That's Kiara down there. Okay, putting it to rest. Kiara. Now her last name, mm, I have not confirmed. I'm going to go with Kiara Atik or Atik. Atik. I don't know what which the emphasis is on. I'm so sorry I'm butchering your name. If you ever see this, uh, you know, comment below on how to pronounce your name and with like phonetic spelling. So let's get into it. I'm gonna read you the description. A car mechanic on the verge of becoming a grandfather, a community of expectant mothers on a pregnancy message board, and a pregnant woman in colonial New England each questioned the mechanics of childbirth. Based in the true story of Jorge Olón, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. There's an accent on the second O. I know Spanish, but mm, I hope that was right. Anyways, uh, based on the true story of Jorge Olón and the birthing device he invented in his garage, Bump spans time and space in an effort to grapple with the mystery and the miracle of maternity. There it is. That's the bump we're talking about. The baby bump. Everyone's favorite bump. For a little more context, there's sort of three groups of moms that we're following. One is the daughter of, in the play, his name is Luis Vasquez, but he's based off of Jorge Olón, a real guy. And so it's him, his wife, and then his daughter, Claudia. And they are one group that we're following. Then we're also following a group of expectant mothers on a message board. So they're online in like a little chat room. And then we are also following an expectant mother in the 1790s. She's got a midwife with her. So there's three groups we're following and it's focused on Claudia mainly, but it's not totally focused on Luis, her dad, who invents the birthing device, but that is like a main concept of the show. So to explain his birthing device that he creates a little bit, Jorge slash Luis watches a video about how to get a cork out of a wine bottle. I have watched a video, it does look like magic. There's like a plastic bag that you put in, you inflate it, you get the cork towards the top and then you can just kind of like slide the cork out. In the play, Luis watches this YouTube video and he's like, hmm, I think this could maybe work with babies, like popping a baby out of a vagina. Lofty idea, but it works. So part of the play is about him developing that device, but it's not the center of the play, I would say, which I actually appreciate, but we'll get to that later. If you like to read more about the birthing device and Jorge Odon, I have a Patreon page that you can become a patron of. I would love you to be there. And uh, I do more research about each play. You get more in-depth stuff that I've dug up about the playwright, about some topics in the play, and that's all on my Patreon. So if you want to learn more about all of that, check it out. I will link it in the description box below. But Luis and his family are sort of the center of the play and then it switches around so every scene is a different, you know, mom group that we're looking at. Casting wise, there are two men in this show and 10 women. We love to see, I love to see that. There are three characters that are for Latinx actors. The person that, this play is based off of Jorge Olón is Argentinian. So it's assumed that the character is Argentinian and then his wife and daughter also are, it seems, but it's not specifically said 
in the character breakdown. And then the other four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, the other nine roles, they are not specified any specific ethnicity, but the playwright does note that, especially for the characters on the message board, it's their names are also cute. It's like apple and walnut and plum. Avocado is one of them. And the playwright has a little note that says, these characters are written with the anonymity. I don't even know if I said that right. Anonymity of an online message board in mind. Therefore, we don't know their names, ages, or even locations other than what comes up in the dialogue. The fruit monikers are meant to allow elasticity in both the casting and interpretation of these parts. Please cast diverse. Please cast diverse. We love diverse casts. That's something that there needs to be more of on the stages out there. So that's great. That's character breakdown. That's the description. Let's talk about things that I like about this play. It centers around the story of a person of color. We love to see that. It is great to amplify positive stories about people of color. I'm super passionate about this because while there are some plays that I really like that sort of delve into the trauma of life as a person of color, I do really feel like there's a lack of stories out there. Well, maybe not a lack, I just haven't found them yet. I haven't seen them, they haven't been produced as much. I feel like there could always be more stories about positive things that people of color have done for the world and, or just like a happy life that a person of color has lived because I feel like there's just so much trauma that's being put out there and I just like a little bit of joy every so often. So it's really nice that this story is centered around an awesome thing that this Argentinian man in real life actually did. That's great. Diverse opportunities for casting I mentioned that earlier. For the message board, there's no reason that they should all be white. Absolutely no reason. If that happens, it makes no sense, to me at least. And I think there's a really cool opportunity to perhaps cast black women, I mean specifically in my opinion, as the midwife and the expectant mom in the 1790s. I will get to why I think that is a cool idea in a bit, but also those two characters, there's like no description of any ethnicity, so there's no reason they can't be women of color. So let's make that happen. It's a woman heavy show. I love that there's lots of women in the cast, more women than men. Written by a lady. Love, love me. Some playwrights that are not cis straight white men. Yeah, that's all I gotta say about that. I'm, make, I like that it's written by a woman about women's issues, but also women's issues aren't just for women. We'll get to that in a second. Anyways, let's talk about some stuff that comes up in the show. Let me grab my notes. These are some topics that I thought bubbled up from me reading this play. They could be different for everyone. And I think that's one of my favorite things about theater is when a show creates conversation afterwards there's things to talk about and that's one of the easiest ways for there to be change made after a show. I don't know what topics would maybe come up if I saw it live but as a reader, solely a reader, here's some things that I thought about. One thing was how men are involved in pregnancy and like childbirth. In this play they talk a lot about men being absent from the childbirthing process. For example, the 1790s mom says that her husband is at a tavern and not going to be present for the birth. And that sort of topic pops up a lot that men are absent during that time. And I mean, it kind of, I thought it was funny because the story with my parents is always that my dad was actually on the golf course when I was about to be born. My mom was actually at the hospital and she was like to my dad, you are driving me nuts. Please leave. Please go play golf. Do something fun. Go away. And so, uh, you know, he was like, okay, you know, whatever you say. And then he went to the golf course and of course they had to relay the news that I was coming out into the world. And 
you know, he of course rushed off and went to the hospital and he was there when I was born. But that topic being brought up so often just made me think of that story with my family and you know, how often men are not present for that moment in time, but also sometimes raising kids. But the interesting thing is how much men are involved in one, regulating women's bodies, but two, like innovations that have to do with women's bodies. So in this case, in the play, a man invents a device to help with birthing. And there's countless examples of men being innovators in the gynecological, I think that's how you say it, gynecological, I think there's an extra C. That field men are super present in. And I mean, there's another play that I've read that's about how innovations in that field were basically all because of the exploitation of black women, which awful, but I'm not surprised. And there's just lots of examples of men being very active and in fact, very present in that field. And, you know, on another hand, men are very active and present in participating in regulating women's bodies in terms of what they can and can't do with their own bodies, you know? Birth control, abortion. There's so many things that men think that they need to put their little opinions in there for. So that topic was coming up a lot for me and it's interesting. And I think that's a topic that, you know, could be talked about more. More people should have conversations about that and how much men are in women's business. So there, that was one topic. Another topic is trauma and birthing, especially for women of color. This topic. In this play, Claudia is very nervous about giving birth and about birthing in general. There's so much information about it, all these different methods for childbirth that you can do. That's actually part of a funny thing in the play is Claudia wants to have like a natural birth at her house and like water or whatever. And her parents are both like, what are you talking about? That's crazy. But I kind of like, while that sounds terrifying to me, I kind of get it. Claudia's parents are very like, well, if you go to a hospital, it'll be safer. You know, there'll be people there that know what they're doing. And for some women, that's just not how they feel. It feels like more dangerous to go to a hospital. It feels safer to be in their homes and with you know, a doula or someone that they trust that will listen to them that they formed a bond with instead of just a random doctor who may or may not listen to them and actually cause harm to them. There's just so many examples of especially women of color being in a situation where medical professionals do not listen to us. And I mean, specifically like black women, the maternal mortality rate is horrifying in the United States. You know, that's just something we could all talk more about. And if this play is produced, then maybe more people will talk about it. Who knows? Last thoughts. I would say that this show is really relatable. I really enjoyed reading this. I read a review The critic said something along the lines of anyone who has been birthed will like this show or something. And that's all of us. <laughs> I think people that have gone through the childbirthing process would really connect with this play, but also I'm not planning on having kids anytime soon and I really liked reading it. I think anyone would like this show and I think it's really important that this is not marketed if it is produced as a women's show. Like it's a show for everyone, women's issues are for everyone and it's also so relatable because of the references to the internet and technology and the message board is super cute and super fun little online chat room so they share like articles and stuff about different types of births you can have and like all this information is in this group chat and that's overwhelming i think pregnancy would be very scary for me because there would be so many things that i'd have to google so many things that i would want to know about and i think it would just be like it would just be nerve central so that was super relatable. And also the juxtaposition of that and then the 1790s mom and midwife going through things like not knowing. Like the 1790s mom is when she has the baby and the midwife leaves, the mom is like, where are you going? And she's like, 
we're done. Like you have the baby and now you're done. She's like, right, but like, what do I do now? <laughs> and that's just like so relatable. That's kind of helpful in some ways because you can't be overloaded with information and I feel like it would maybe calm my nerves. I don't know. But that juxtaposition is really cool and I think makes the play really relatable because both of those things are scary, I think, to a lot of people. So the final question is, does this play have the potential for social change, in my opinion? And my answer is, yes, I do. I think so. I think there's lots of topics that come up from the show that are important for us to be talking about right now. And also it's just a really heartwarming play, uplifting the story of a real person of color that did something cool, but also like it's very about like real things that women and people with uteruses go through. So overall, highly recommend this play. Here's another look at it if you want it. All right, let me see if I can find a quote. <laughs> yeah. So Claudia says to her dad, you saw an unrelated video on YouTube and parlayed it into an invention that you made in your garage that you think might help the medical profession. And then she turns to her mom and says, is this what it's like to be a man? <laughs> I just thought that was cute. <laughs> so that's all. I'll leave you with that. I mean, check out the play. Check out my Patreon if you want. Subscribe if you feel like it. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. And then I will know what you like and what you don't like, internet. Comment below if you've read this play or any other plays that you really like that you think I should check out. Any, anything, comment below. Anyways, okay, I'm gonna say goodbye now. Bye.